let's start with a, a topic which is little new in the sense of uh, empathy. Uh, we keep on talking about empathy and it's an integral part of human personality. It's a part of our emotion. Uh, but when we are talking about technology or, or in healthcare system in digitization uh, of the of facilities and services, it's a little different because these days we can hear about more about empathy as one of the uh, very good leadership skills. So uh, now you can uh, actually uh, consider this as a leadership skill, but it's actually uh, a feeling uh, or, or uh, and, and when we actually talk about compassion, uh, and empathy. So uh, there is little difference in that as well. And how to uh, uh, use our capability as a human uh, to serve human beings and for everyone around. Uh, so why not to start with empathy as a skill? So this was the thought process. So I wrote different articles as well earlier that how to program empathy for animals. And there I have discussed about AI uh, models. Uh, especially uh, for animal care and for cancer patients as well. Yeah, in oncology, uh, I think two years back with uh, Antics India magazine. Now, uh, uh, moving forward, gradually, uh, we, we can see that it's not about artificial intelligence. We, uh, we always keep, uh, keep on talking about AI in different use cases in different scenarios, how we can actually facilitate people around with this technology and all that. So me, I'm specifically from AI, uh, but uh, I, I love working across the domain. So while my experience uh, across working across the domain, I have realized that this is not only a feeling or a leadership skill. This is actually uh, a way we can program a machine so that the that machine would be able to, you know, adapt some of the emotions of human as well. So I'll I'll start, uh, you know, explaining uh, how we can move forward with the same. So I'll start with the topic of how, how empath empathetic AI uh, for healthcare purpose because I'm specifically focusing today on uh, for healthcare point of view. And gradually, I'll give you some use cases also. I'll, I'll show you practically how we can move towards an era of where we can put little emotions. Being of one in the healthcare sector as well. And then I'll, of course, I'm going to discuss about how in Geo Health Hub, uh, using empathy, uh, we are actually, you know, uh, providing very good uh, experience, uh, healthcare experience uh, to the patients. Uh, not only uh, to the person who are ill or sick, to everyone around who are healthy as well. So I'll, I'll, I'm gr gradually I'll move towards that uh, as well, the practical scenario. But I'll start with the little baseline. Let me share my screen first. Please let me know if then you would, you would be able to see my screen. All right. So yes, of course, I'm starting with the topic and gradually I'll take one uh, example as well, uh, a practical uh, scenario, a use case where we can actually implement empathetic code. Uh, and then I'll move towards how Geo Health Hub is also using empathy uh, for patient's care to manage health of everyone around. Uh, so this is just a disclaimer saying that the thoughts which I'm mentioning in, in this presentation, uh, it's not actually, you know, very much related to the policy and the intent of JPL, Geo Platforms Limited. I'll tell you about the, what is JPL and what uh, what is Geo Health Hub and how we land within the Reliance industry uh, and all that. But this is just a disclaimer about the kind of thoughts I'm going to present today. So yes, so I'm not actually, so uh, in the topic you have seen that I'm talking about cognitive empathy. So empathy, uh, as we all know, we have different kinds of empathy, compassionate, uh, compassionate empathy, affective empathy. So feeling feelings of other person as well, generally we talk about that when we actually take care of our loved ones and that is uh, an, an, an empathy. Uh, we generally, uh, you know, uh, use it for our relationship in a human. 
but a cognitive therapeutic uh, empathy so it's generally uh, first of all cognitive empathy so understanding why other people is thinking something in a particular manner and what is the behavioral science behind the uh, scenes um, you know, the understanding from different point of view from different perception um, and actually acting accordingly is it's about cognitive empathy then so con uh, considering not not only uh, feelings but actually the thought process of others as well so so thought process of other as well what they are thinking how it is related to ai and ai when i am talking about ai it's not only about artificial intelligence it's about augmented intelligence then what the data with this whole combination between data augmented intelligence and cognitive empathy how, how we can actually make it a unitely uh, beneficial uh, for the purpose or the or the or the or in particular domain like healthcare or digital healthcare system so i'll talk about th these are the, some of the basics when we talk about empathy okay it is a human emotion and all that but why i'm and i'll give you the reason that why i'm considering augmented intelligence why not ai artificial intelligence here for particular scenarios why cognitive empathy and how it plays a vital role and significant role yeah somebody raised hand somebody raised hand i guess right can you hear me clearly yeah yeah you're completely audible uh, in case there's a question we can take the question in the end of the session all right otherwise uh, they can they are free to put all those yeah, yeah. in chat session we'll take it one by one yeah sure all right yeah so yeah so these are some theoretical aspects of um why cognitive empathy uh, augmented intelligence and what is the magic behind all three uh, of them together as a magic uh so uh, let's start with so whenever we talk about okay we want to embed empathy in our codes uh, we want to build a system uh with a cognitive empathy uh, then the first thing comes in our mind that how it is practically possible and how to convince people also after developing all such kind of systems that they can adapt it so we have to make them sure as a con considering human psychology that because it's a augmented intelligence this thing is going to support human experts not going to replace them so it's not about overpowering the overpowering the human intelligence but it, it is it is going to assist human intelligence first of all then understanding human minds and trying to put some of the aspects of uh, human intelligence and thought process and try to code it now the pro now the problem is uh, how we are going to code it first of all what kind of data we need uh, to collect how we are going to train a machine with all those data and how the data is going to say itself that there is a empathy in that all those lines uh, and checks or speech or uh, you know voices so all these questions automatically comes in our mind uh, when we are actually specifically related to technology domain so i'll come uh, one by one on each and every uh, aspects so it is not so coder generally we consider as they are very logical and medical expert we always consider that since from day one of their education in medical colleges they have to understand that they have to keep their feelings aside when they are actually dealing with the humans in medical field but here the scenario is little different we are putting feelings uh, but not into humans but trying to put it into some of the machines uh, and again uh, the coder who is going to code that machine should not be only logically inclined but also be uh, you know some part uh, also be able to write some empathetic code not only the logical code so how we are going to put it uh, practically coming to the next slide so this is just a mind map to make you understand that how the things would be going and you can visualize it actually so visualization is uh, in this mind map you can see that the health workers or the caregivers what are the features uh, we need to see from uh, uh, their side are they should be imaginative affective and cognitive so so that they can communicate that empathy not only for the task purpose that they, 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 there is some task 
and we should we have to deal with the patient we have to write some uh, you know predefined templates for the chat chatbots without the feelings and they are asking just the manual questions and the answers to the person who is uh, and that person is a patient if that person is dealing uh, with some problem healthcare issues of course uh, if they are on a risk of something or they are dealing with some of the trauma uh, or if it is related to mental wellness uh, it's it's very uh, you know uh, um, unfair to deal uh, in a way uh, in a very straight way as as the machine does uh, with the humans so how to make it more empathetic uh, so that they can actually uh handle all kind of scenarios uh, as we humans uh handle uh, all those things so uh it should be relational based how how we can make those uh, systems are uh, a relational being so uh it's not only about uh, you know sharing information or making a sense of connection so as as you see when we go to doctor's place and if we are dealing with some issue doctor along with uh, you know they listen to our problem they give us medical treatment along with that they give us uh, assurance and make us available for you know creating that trust bonding in between a patient and medical expert so that trust how that trust comes into that relationship so that the patient should be you know uh, in can feel that, that they are in a, on a safe hand so how to correct connect that, those connections um, with the machine as well how to provide a augmented intelligence uh, to the medical expert no not the ai access systems to make them you know uh, to to uh, uh, enable medical expert to take uh, support from some machine so it's a two way it's a win win situation for medical expert and the patient as well medical expert are also getting a helping hands um uh, for most of the time as a as, as a augmented intelligence and patients are also giving some kind of facility because medical experts nurses they are most of the time they are very busy with their schedule they can't give that much time to each and every patient in the hospital and patient when they are dealing with some of the disease specifically some long duration disease or some chronic disease they need a continuous counseling every day or most of the time whenever they are feeling down so this is a kind of patient care management system where we specifically need such kind of systems where where a person can or the patient can interact uh, with the with the system who is empathetic enough to share their feelings on a day to day basis so that they can so and this is a very important part of healing process uh, apart from the medical treatment uh, the doctors give so now, this is the way uh, i can see everything around and one is cognitive empathy how to communicate empathy between patient caregiver patient and caregiver another is how augmented intelligence a play a vital role in between the whole uh, scenario uh what is the magic of data in between so when you con consider customer experience or when customers are patients they, they, who are very vulnerable who are dealing with some issues in their life so just uh, uh imagine for a moment uh, that you want to actually you know asking for some data from your side in in rotation you are going to give some very good facility related to healthcare but first you need answers from the patient as well that how they are feeling uh, is there, is there is there is some issue uh, they are dealing with related to medication or something like that those kind of data the data also you have to take to develop more um, efficient models and uh, support system like augmented intelligence system for the same so how to collect all those data and generally in healthcare we, we say that donating data for yourself only so how to make available or to how to convince humans to donate their data so that they are actually contributing in the part of uh, developing the whole digital healthcare ecosystem and in revert they are they also going to be benefited right now or in the future so this is a very good combination of cognitive empathy data and augmented intelligence so this is a three years uh, which we can use to develop a beautiful ecosystem uh, and which which is for everyone around so uh, dimensions of trust because trust is a very important factor 
uh, when you want to penetrate any new technology or when you want to convince people that yes uh, they are on a safe hand they can use this technology and generally we these days we talk about responsible ai and earlier was ethical ai and all that is yes, of course responsible ai ethical ai ethical concerns and aspects are the very significant uh, factors when we are actually going for you know developing some of the ai models and for, for uh, you know actually designing some of the um, framework but how to generate those trust what are the steps uh, to go move further so of course if you want to convince people to adapt technology to embrace change you have to make them comfortable so how to make uh, that combination of comfort and care together with the help of some of the techniques or approaches uh, which is very natural but we have to ingest artificially in the systems so uh, trust disclosure can be directly therapeutic so this is a kind of therapy because if you want to you know uh, if you want patient to disclose all those information to share all those information with you their feeling their thought process you have to create that trust first so uh, empathy cognitive empathy plays a very important role in the same because uh, once you can understand uh, what are the needs of other pair person as well you can definitely going to align how you can make that person comfortable from healthcare aspects point of view so and how to simulate empathy how to teach machine about the empathy how to move from logical code to empathetic code so this is the dimension of trust that we have to focus on specifically when we are going to develop a framework for the same connecting so human connection to patient care how we are actually uh, going towards you know putting uh, all those factors and bringing empathy as a, as a part of integral part of the system where we are using high grade technology with the feelings as well so um, as you see uh, in medical experience uh, healing medical experience spe specifically <laughs> when you de deal with mental wellness or care there should be a very good bonding between <coughs> sorry <coughs> there should be very good bonding between patient and doctor so how to create that bond how to infuse that empathetic ai into the system how to give that care to everyone how artificial cognitive empathy should be ingested for disease management system some person is dealing with some disease which is a long term as i had discussed then how to go for uh, some kind of for example a bot which is where we have infused artificial cognitive empathy and this is for personalized care and so so i'll take one use case and its name is nlp driven empathetic system i i i'm going to just give an outline uh that's how we can actually design a framework how we can actually approach this problem when we say okay putting empathy into a code right an empathetic code uh how to do that so uh th those empathy is coming from we as a human we carry it naturally so how to uh, ingest into a machine then um augmented intelligence because we are not replacing anyone we are just assisting a uh, human expert to make better decision uh, on the problems the problematic scenarios uh, and uh, and you know to get, to uh, to help them to diagnose better uh, and to do some redundant tasks as well so this is the assurity from our side and this is also kind of empathy we are giving to medical experts that they can adapt that change they can they can adapt that technology uh, very soon in a comfortable way that's a two way thing now uh, if i'm if i'm talking about an nlp driven empathetic uh, interface in a healthcare so just consider a scenario for telemedicine solution and all we want to develop a nlp driven empathetic system this is a practical scenario so how we can move forward so for that for that we need information data to proceed further what kind of information we need we can get videos as a data 
uh, and those videos are the, um, the are the interaction between patient and uh, and medical expert. Maybe a five six minute video will take it, uh, and will tag it with empathetic videos and non empathetic empathetic uh, videos as a classification. We can take some speech, some text, uh, the text in a chatbot, and the chatbot is the NLP driven empathetic chatbot uh, for he digital healthcare. So how to do that? So if we want to develop that, we, had, uh, we have to definitely go for multi-dimensional framework where we, we have to train a classifier to recognize empathetic intent in patient care giver communication. So as we generally do, we, we tag, we annotate, we analyze uh, some of the text and we tag it, we label it with the sentiments and the emotions. Same for the, we as a human, uh, we know that what are the intents and what are the text which actually gives sentiments uh, of empathy or emotions of empathy into the text. So we have to train a classifier by annotating and tagging and analyzing all those texts uh, with the empathetic intent that can be automatically uh, done with the labels. One, we have that data and information in the form of video, speech, and text. Recognize cognitive therapeutic empathy at utterance level, because when we talk also as a human, how we talk, what is our tone, uh, uh, whether we are showing some kind of empathy to a person, we can understand their feelings. We can understand their thought process as well. So, so that kind of data also we can consider. And on the basis of all those data, we can, and this is just a very vague idea and, and a very outer layer of that framework. But in this fashion, we can approach towards going empathetic um, AI. So compute and empathy score. We can generally, generally calculate sentiment scores and all that. <clears throat> Why not for empathy score as well? Then validate it against the gold standards. Of course, we need something to validate. So how we are going to validate? That would be a human expert base. We know that we are going to create a database where we are saying that these three videos and six videos are very empathetic when patient and doctor are uh, doing some kind of communication uh, or uh, talking about disease management and all that. So that kind of things uh, we can consider, we can tag it, we can remove biases also, and that can be statistically measured. We all know how to remove biases in the data uh, using some of the statistical measure. So you can opt for that. Once this thing, this baseline is ready for data set in training, for example, you can consider six recorded data patient video interaction tagged as three empathetic, three non-empathetic collected from healthcare training in initiative. So I, I actually attended one of the workshop mid of this year where I got this idea that just we'll, we can take video, speech, text and tag it with uh, empathetic and non-empathetic uh, conversation. And, and this has already mentioned in one of the research paper also in 2015 that we can analyze those texts uh, and speech and annotate it very well, tag it, classify it. And then we have to create an interface because how you're dealing with the patient is very important, what kind of interface you have. So those interface definitely would be very interactive. This is the reason I'm saying it should be AI powered cognitive empathy interface, where you have to, maybe you can use some immersive and it's like you can use some AR, VR, Avatar as well to deal with some of the, you know, patients where patient can feel free that they can discuss all those problems with the Avatar, with the immersive, uh, uh, you know, uh, that virtual agent as well, where no one is going to judge them on the basis of what they are talking about. So considering that behavioral science and psychology of a person as well, some kind of immersiveness also we can bring in the picture. Uh, we can make that uh, immersive agent as an empathetic one, specifically for telemedicine uh, purpose. And this kind of interface we need to develop where a person is typing some text to a, a patient or, a, or expert, a medical expert is typing some patient to, a, um, uh, to some particular patient um, that how you're feeling now. So they can say that, okay, I'm feeling better, but I'm worried or I'm concerned about my next coming three days because you know, these kind of issues I'm facing. So here worried, concerned, anxiety, some kind of text we can collect, we can tag it as, as some of the sentiments given by 
patients and we can consider that in such kind of scenarios how we can design an interface and and you know the whole framework that they can feel that the somebody is there with them when they are feeling anxiety when they are feeling you know they worried about their what will happen for next if 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 for some some of the things which may reoccur so if they are worried about that how we can make them feel comfortable with the cognitive empathy so this is the role of cognitive empathy in uh, augmented intelligence which is very very important and crucial when we are talking about specifically about healthcare system so how we are going to evaluate it we have to so this is a two way process we have to talk to healthcare app developer as well because of course we 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 don't have to develop only the logical codes but the empathetic code medical expert and caregiver so how we are going to evaluate those kinds of framework and the systems functionality aesthetics that we need to you know uh, take care of uh, how the interface should look like if we are using some ai we are in immersive agent what they, that immersive agent would look like how the immersive agent can show their facial expression as well so that the person in front of them the patient is in front of them can feel comfortable can feel relaxed and happy uh, apart from all the emotions which they are actually dealing with so that kind of things we need, we need, we may we have to make it very uh, creative as well with the emotions uh, that kind of things we need we, we have to take care and that that the evaluator would be the healthcare app developer for the same medical experts and caregivers they can actually recognize so it's a two way emotions when a caregiver is actually talking to a patient so what they are feeling uh, how they can actually give that uh, gauge that negative emotions uh, verbal non verbal emotion messages and they can evaluate on basis of that so this is whole about what i think uh, that when we are talking about uh, you know cognitive empathy uh, specifically for um, an empathetic ai for in the health in the healthcare system now this is one side of that that we can all for in the in the coming future and the coming trends how we are going to so in the next presentation i am going to tell you so i am a part of geo health hub and uh, what we are doing and how we are putting empathy uh, in a form of you know some of the services which is in digital healthcare domain so i'll i'll come up with that in geo health uh, which is a which is a part of reliance industries limited and its subsidiary is jpl geo geo platforms limited here you can see geo health up and my geo is a gateway of digital uh, world of uh, geo platforms limited from where we can enter into this um, platform geo health which you can download in your in your mobile android and ios or you can use a web version version also from health.geo as a domain url so here in geo health what we are talking about is so this is about vision where vision we are specifically mentioned personal and trusted so personal and trusted when we say personal and understanding uh, you know patients uh, uh, you know needs specifically we have to take care of and that automatically brings empathy in the picture uh, that we should and but here we as a human are, are actually ingesting all those empathy into the codes into the system into the services into the platforms so how we are making a healthcare companion uh, of, uh, you know for every family and geo health uh, hub how it's trying to do that so geo health is not for a particular person but for the whole family you can register you uh, your own Whole family member and link it your own account and trace everyone's health around uh, in the family uh, and this is specifically a health companion for everyone uh, anywhere anytime. Um, here you can create and this is not only for the people who is facing some issue related to health. It is actually for healthy people as well for sub healthy as well. how we are into patient care as well we uh, we are into doctor consultation uh, we are into you know we have chatbot also jiva which de deals beautifully uh, uh, with the patient uh, with the people around to help them out to uh, you and to you know actually get some of the answers of uh, of, of of problems related to healthcare 
we have very good articles to read about to make awareness health care awareness to the people around so that they can be comfortable that if they are dealing with some situation it's okay we have solution and we have information as well in the form of awareness sessions that also uh, we as a geo health provide for everyone we believe in awareness accuracy accessibility affordability that should be affordable for everyone so this uh, service right now on the platform is free you can use it uh, for healthcare uh, purpose for for you and for your loved ones we have all these features which is already integrated in our platform uh, whether you are actually asking for lab uh, reports uh, for doctor consultation uh, for creating some beautiful insights out of your health data uh, that that as a part of smart ai uh, systems that also we have in our platform we have health locker as well where you can put your repository so as we all know in india we we uh, we are actually from um, you know our, our policy point of view we have to create our abha id abha id is all about you know you are creating your id which is a health care id where you are going to link all your data all your historical data till date you don't have to carry all the physical copy it's there in the health locker which is very safe so safe and secure which is also one of the very important feature about considering or understanding the uh, that fear of other people or the patient when they are actually dealing or they are revealing their health information to the everyone around so this is very secure in a form of health locker which is also uh, a facility with uh geo health platform we are already connected to many of the hospitals most renowned doctors to actually facilitate and enable all the people out there just have one go on their hand in their laptop they can just uh book consultation and all that and uh, take all those facility uh creating a symptom checker where you can check your system and this is about care before the cure we care we care about the people around us and this is a one kind of empathy we are putting uh, in a form of a feature where we we actually want you to trace your health parameters in a regular way by us uh, by answering some of the uh, questions in a very uh, easy manner in a, in a very easy step and rest assured the platform will take care of your health and will give you the service and the alarms and the attentiveness and the awareness uh so you don't have to trace or worry about your health of your you and your loved ones uh we actually give your status on your mobile with the colors uh, red green and yellow if if your health parameters is actually you know giving some of the indication which is alarming your health status would be automatically become red so uh, not only with the parameters of the numerical values with the color code also any lay person also can understand that if it is red it's alarming it's yellow it's little uh, need attention or if it is green they are on safe side so not only so this is for everyone around whether you are digitally literate or not you gauge it from the color what is the status of your health and does this smart ai feature is known as health patri with geo health this is the video i am just sharing you may not be able to hear the voice but i can give you details in between so what is the role of empathy in digital healthcare system and how to encode it how to code it and put it uh, in a form of feature as well doctor consultation lab on the go doctors near me
specific, specifically in the at the time of COVID, people uh, yeah, were using extensively all those services. This is the color code. This is the national health ID in India, uh, which is compulsory now for every Indian to make an ABHA ID. And this is via our platform with just one click, you can make your ABHA ID. Your all health records would be connected with this. And you can only give once you as a user will give access to even the doctors, then only they can use those records to, and then only they can see those records without your consent. Nobody else, they, they are safe in health locker. Nobody else can see your health records or access it. Health feed for managed health. For some of the comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, this is very important to manage your health. So uh, these are some of the features, how we can manage health using GeoHealth. As a platform, we have also implemented a green pass uh, during COVID in all the corporate office of Reliance Industries Limited from GeoHealth Hub side, where your green pass will reflect at the on the gate. You can see some of the pictures. A person who is showing green pass and scan code at the gate, then only they are allowed to enter through the corporate office. If it is green, that means you are COVID negative and you're allowed to go inside. And this is linked with your employee ID as well. So we have solutions for corporates as well. So this is about geo health uh, for all. Uh, yes. So from a journey from empathetic AI for healthcare system, how actually we can take one small example of telemedicine, how we can focus on empathetic code, how we can develop some NLP driven cognitive a therapeutic, uh, empathetic uh, based uh, um, models, um, how we can actually leverage all those features and actually provide empathy in a form of feature as well on your platform to make people comfortable and make them embrace technology. And it is for everyone, it should, it should be penetrated into all the grassroots level for all the people who are not only digitally literate, but also considering the social determinants of healthcare solutions, we have considered NGO Health Hub and it's available on your mobiles and laptops. So we, we have scenario, we have theory, we have, uh, we have practical use cases as well. And this service is now available from theory to practical. Yeah, thank you everyone. This is about, uh, I wanted to convey my thought to everyone around. We can go for questions now. Yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh, before we proceed to all the questions, answering all the questions, I would like to request the attendees, please fill in the poll about feedback as it helps us to conduct more such sessions in future. And it is live now.
Yes, ma'am. Meanwhile, you can uh, take up uh, questions one by one from the Q&A section. Right. Yes. So starting from uh, the first question, I can see we have nine questions. Augmented intelligence and artificial intelligence, what are the similarities? So yes, what are the similarities? Similarities um, are uh, on a higher side. What, are, what is the dissimilarity? So it's uh, like um, now augmented intelligence is, is going to assist human experts um, and uh, it is not going to replace. Uh, this is the uh, tagline we generally use to describe augmented intelligence. So it is going to augment and support human for taking a decision. For example, I'll give you some scenario where, where there is a, um, a problem of, uh, for, for a particular patient, they are going for cancer diagnosis. So it's a very crucial when, when, the, when, the, when a doctor is going to give a result to a patient based on their reports, their biosphere reports and all that. So in that case, they generally need second opinion or they go for a second doctor as well to get, you know, to get the assurance that yes, decision is correct. So at that kind of decision making, uh, you know, um, scenarios where the decisions are very crucial to take in such cases, Human expert, and I, I already attended one of the conference where most of the renowned oncologists from India and across the globe, they were talking about that we need some kind of support system, some kind of augmentation from the machine point of view. But when, when we are actually dealing with some kind of, you know, dilemma or ambiguity in diagnosis part, so we can, uh, we can take assistance from uh, machine as well um, uh, for the second opinion or for, for the uh, support as well. So this kind of requirement is already given by most of the oncologists and I'm sure there are many solutions, but this is the difference that people and human experts, they need augmentation, not the replacement. So this is the uh, difference uh, when we are talking specifically for healthcare. Um, you know, augmentation, augmented intelligence and artificial intelligence. Uh, coming to next question, show, uh, should the patient know whether he or she is speaking with a doctor or a chatbot? So see, it, it, it all depends on scenarios. So sometimes people are not comfortable uh, in sharing some of the uh, questions or some of the problems specifically related to mental well-being or anxiety issues issues or sleeping disorders and they are they, and they are very uh, you know they are in dilemma that whether to discuss that or not so in such scenarios uh, they feel more comfortable when there is a virtual uh, agent or a bot rather than uh, going for a human because they, they they don't have to worry about that the person is going to judge them so in such of the psychological parameters we can consider a chatbot is a good idea but of course, uh, we can't replace human experts and we are not, we don't want to even, okay? So in that scenario, yes, of course, we know and we, uh, this is better uh, to have a human expert in front of you so that you can get all those uh, assistance and care as human can give with the emotions and with the knowledge as well. Uh, in real, how much AI using uh, in currently healthcare sector and how we can show 90% is accuracy is enough? Yeah, this is a very important question. Generally, people are coming with the models uh, where, the, uh, where they are claiming that our model gives you 90% accuracy or 91% accuracy. But how about in healthcare? It's very crucial domain to actually even consider 90% accuracy. So that this is the reason we have policies these days where where are so this is this is the reason also why we use augmented support system for human experts not to replace them so this kind of models where there is a 90 percent accuracy we can use as a augmented intelligence uh, expert uh, for human uh, experts so that we can get, get a next level of uh, uh, medical expert as well from human point of view where we, the hum, that human can give a second opinion and first opinion can, can come from uh, AI models and second time uh, human have to verify human exp uh, expert has to validate those results and then only we can go for the scenarios where there is only 90% of accuracy uh, in this way we can move uh, if accuracy is only 90% and not more than that uh, hello keen to know how you can collect data from these kind of systems so yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful question. And this is the reason when we talk about empathetic customer experience and empathetic customer uh, interface. 
So you have to design an interface or you have to give that experience to the customer, which should be empathetic. Now, how, how we can say that, that how to actually encourage people to donate data, to enter data in your platforms so that you can use uh, those data to provide uh, services to, the, to all people around. So you have to create a user interface, which is very closely related to the uh, human's thought process how they are thinking, what kind of features they 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 actually comfortable in answering. If you are asking a question, that should not be a very direct question, uh, but it should be in a fashion, in a way that they should feel comfortable answering those questions. You can give multiple choices to them to actually give you the immediate level of answer as well, not very specific answer. Such kind of empathetic uh, customer experience or customer interfaces when you are going to design, you are going to encourage people to donate more data. Uh, are you aware of any such disorder where a, uh, disorders where AI is useful? So yeah, uh, so there are many disorders like um, uh, mental disorders, sleep pattern disorders. There are many disorders where uh, AI is uh, very much uh, benefited with the person because I was just talking to one person who uh, who is actually, uh, you know, developing some of the models for mental hospitals. They were saying that people are suffering a lot and it's hazardous most of the time when, when people, when patients from uh, mental disorder, uh, you know, they when they're engaging with them in the hospitals uh, uh, and going there in person and dealing with them. So in such scenarios, uh, how we can actually create a, a managed system, healthcare managed system or monitoring system for them so that we can monitor from from your location or from your place virtually and see that how the things, if the things are in control. Otherwise, you can take an immediate action when things are not in control. So in such kind of scenarios, AI is uh, effective for managing health specifically uh, for mental well-being and mental uh, health care as well. How is empathetic intent classification different from sentiment analysis? So yes. So when you talk about sentiment, so generally we uh, talk about reviews also, um, you know, uh, about some of the blogs and everything or, or your, your uh, how you feel and all that. So it's about happy, sad, uh, worried, okay, and all that. But when we are actually talking about empathetic intent classification, so empathetic is always in context with another person. This is your individual scenario where you are saying that I'm happy, I'm sad and all that with some of the service or some of the things. But when we are talking about empathetic intent classification, the data should be in a way where you're interacting with other person and you are trying to understand the thought process of other person as well. Those kinds of intent, which is actually related to, so it's not an absolute sentiment, it's about correlated sentiment or relative sentiment with the other person. That kind of intent we called as empathetic intent. Is you having tie up with hospitals? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, we are having tie up with most many uh, hospitals. We have our own hospital as well, RN Foundation Hospital, Reliance Hospital, uh, in most of the uh, places in India and out of that also. So uh, we are definitely uh, working with real data and scenarios. So we have tie ups with uh, hospitals. And we have hospital as well, where we are actually, you know, some of the features we are uh, using those features there to for healthcare monitoring uh, for for patient care and all that. How would you design the AI emotive faces considering medical practitioner are to pack personal emotion when dealing with patient? If designed for medical care, how would it be in terms of facial misinterpretation, religious and cult cultural difference? Yeah, that's a good question. And whether uh, we should actually design um, uh, faces or, or virtual interface, so we should have, um, we were just talking about, we should have male, female, both the versions, of course. And uh, what, kind, what kind of facial uh, expressions we, we should carry. So it depends on relative emotions. If you are getting, if when you're asking a simple question and you're, you are getting answers from the patient that, that person is, uh, that patient is anxious, worried, happy or sad what kind of emotions he's dealing with 
according to that you have to create a facial expression from you know doctors medical expert uh, healthcare expert point of view this is the reason i told you that validation should be done by the evaluator and the evaluators are uh, one is healthcare app developer and one other medical expert where they have to take care of negative sentiments and we have to train our model in a same fashion so that we can design our virtual immersive uh, avatar as well uh, based on that based on all those emotions and data can you differentiate ai and augmented intelligence on a broader aspect what kind of data feature needed to train the model if this thing is taking shape then do government have an policy to protect the data from patient because of this point of time every company would have been working on their own ways of collecting and using it yes this is all thing everyone is fighting and and actually looking for data that they should get real data to work on and even when you are when you are talking about co morbidities and all that yes we do need a real time data to validate to train to and all that so how so these days you can already uh, know about many initiative from india ai from government of india from niti aayog they are actually promoting people to do to do some real time surveys the government is also like in a case of tuberculosis disease and all that government is taking a very actionable uh, you know steps uh, where they are actually collecting uh, data uh, doing all those surveys uh, on a ground level with the health camp and all that and they are providing those data which are open data set to the people to to the researchers to work on all those data and find out solution for uh, for all those healthcare problems so yes come government policies government everyone around are now coming up together because earlier we were talking about data now it's about information and then to the knowledge and uh, people are saying that uh, data is not only going to inject in a way that it is it is going to start uh, some ai models or engineers some new technology tech, uh, model but it is going to make those model uh, recyclable where we can re recycle all those model for different different purpose for different different scenarios uh, for the same data so generally we tag these days in the land industry that data is not not only a fuel it's a soil as well so yes uh, we can take this things forward and people are uh, coming up together for the same in a kind of collaboration co creation uh, for the data survey hospitals college in, uh, universities along with the industries uh, you know how does augmented intelligence recognize in health and safety solution so yes so health and safety solution is uh, whenever uh, uh, i i already gave a scenario here um doctor medical practitioner also needs one uh, smart assistant uh, with them to take a, a second uh, opinion or give some kind of samples uh, related to diagnostic images so in that scenarios yes of course it is a role of augmented intelligence where uh, it can help a healthcare practitioner uh, to take a very precise decision without any hesitation and uh, uh, safety solution yes of course so uh, whenever we are doubly sure about the results and the scenarios and the outcomes we are taking a very safe decision uh, and those decision is for for person's life uh, and so so this is the way augmented intelligence uh, is actually putting their role uh, in a form of health and uh, safety solutions will the court accept that the doctor consulted and consulted an ai bot so you are talking about i think policies uh, ethical issues uh, and you know uh, all the uh, guidelines so i think guidelines ethical issues this is a reason we are talking these days about uh, responsible ai um you know health compliance is um, uh, should be followed there should be policies uh, we should be followed when you are actually creating interface or developing solutions for the same uh you have to consider ethical guidelines um uh, for the same and then you can develop a bot but it is not like that you the doctor is going to accept that ai bot generally when we develop a bot it's kind of awareness or kind of question answering for the people who are using that interface or the platform uh when we are talking about doctor because they are, they are, they they carry certain type of type of medical knowledge 
this this bot can be a assisted uh, uh, bot or can be a augmented intelligence system which is going to support them uh, on a next level of decision so in this way we can move forward i think uh, i have answered all the question um, any question or uh, are you not, if anyone is not comfortable with particular answer they can raise uh, their hand and ask me again i'm open for that okay have you considered the issue raised by hopkins okay about ai driven apps taking over the world because uh, they can self replicate and avoid human shutdown yeah so i have already uh, started with the th thing that trustworthiness uh, making people comfortable we are not replacing them we are just going to support them and you have to uh, you know you have to when when it's when you're talking about healthcare system of course we have to go at a certain level and take human assistance and human uh, guidance and medical uh, experts to move and to take forward those decision and things uh, up front uh, uh, and deal with that uh, patient's uh, problems um you know directly uh, relying on the technology specifically on uh, digital healthcare domain uh, right now it's vulnerable yeah yeah so i guess all the questions have been taken up and beautifully answered as well um Thank so you. that take yeah yeah so that takes us to the towards the end of the session uh, thank you very much amarjeet on behalf of analytics vidya i would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session i'm sure thank our you. audience found it insightful and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in the future okay yeah, thank you so much uh, i would be uh, you know very much thankful to uh, the whole team of data uh, analytics vidya for giving this opportunity and sharing my thoughts so generally we as a speaker whenever we come in front uh, of the screen and we are then in discussion with the beautiful minds uh, around uh, we are in a learning phase at that time so uh, indirectly when I, whenever i'm sharing something i'm learning also and with the questions uh, all people are asking around i think uh, it's a kind of um, you know uh, take away for me also that i am also learning in the same fashion as you people are learning so it, th that was a wonderful conversation uh, and thanks for giving me this opportunity thank you so much